sketch the outline of this painting with an HB pencil and I've also masked out the poppies as well with some masking fluid. If you've not heard of masking fluid I'll put a link in the description below all about masking fluid. I'm using cerulean here painting it wet and wet for the sky and I've mixed up a little bit of cerulean and cadmium red painting the sort of distant trees or hills here um, sort of wet into wet trying to keep it away from bleeding in the sky as you see I'm tilting to stop that happening. I'm painting the sort of distant middle ground and foreground with a mixture of permanent yellow and a little bit of quinacridone gold with my size 10 brush wet into wet. I've allowed the painting to dry but I've actually wet all those distant hills again. I've mixed up a little bit of blue and yellow using my size 6 brush painting damp into damp. The paint is quite creamy here. I've mixed up ultramarine with quinacridone gold painting this damp into damp um, inside that sort of green wash that I had originally painted there to create some lovely darks. I've added some violet as well and now I'm adding some crimson because if you look at the photograph, you can almost see sort of red coming out from there. I love, that's why I love the photograph so much. This is permanent yellow. I'm painting wet on dry now. And it's just really these sort of distant fields here. It's got a lovely yellow sort of colour coming from it there. So the paint is quite creamy. And I'm using my large round brush here, painting wet on dry, adding a little bit of the quinacridone gold here, damp into damp. So you don't want the paint too wet. I'm just working my way down to the foreground. As you saw there, I'm adding a little bit of blue and yellow, quite creamy painting, damp into damp in the foreground here. So I've actually got a little bit more green in my paint now. And if you want to make the colours darker, just add a little bit more of ultramarine. Ultramarine and quinacridone gold make a beautiful dark. I'm using the end of a tube of paint to scratch into the surface of the paper to create thin, dark lines because the dark paint runs into those scratches. This is permanent, so if you're not sure about it, you can paint these thin lines later wet on dry. I've removed the masking fluid. Uh, make sure your painting is dry before you do it because it can tear a hole in your paper by doing that. So I'm actually now painting the poppies using some cadmium red, quite watered down, working wet on dry with my size 6 brush. And I'll drop a little bit of red and yellow mixed together to give a lovely warm orange colour in these poppies and add creamier, darker paint by mixing the cadmium red with a little bit of alizarin crimson. actually using a cocktail stick here to scratch into the surface of this damp paint to create more thin dark lines. Remember this is permanent but it does create some nice texture on the poppies.
I'm painting the seed heads now and the buds and the stems using my size 4 round brush with a mixture of the ultramarine, quinacridone gold and cerulean and yellow. So getting some light limey greens and some lovely earthy greens as well. I'm painting some of these pretty violet flowers here using a mixture of ultramarine with a touch of alizarin crimson, working wet on dry and then dropping in some water to dilute to create some light at the top using my size 4 round brush. So I've allowed my painting to dry and I'm working on the poppies again, building up some of the shadows and details using a mixture of cadmium red and alizarin crimson, softening with some clean water as I go. I'm painting the dark at the bottom of the poppies here with a mixture of the ultramarine, alizarin crimson and the quinacridone gold. You get a gorgeous dark mixing three primaries together using my size six brush, working damp into damp. <laughs> really brings those poppies to life just working on these darks and details now on the rest of the flowers the seed heads and the buds there painting in some darker grasses using a mixture of ultramarine the quinacridone gold just these details here brings it to life remembering watercolor less is more so try to leave some areas just a little bit underpainted it keeps the painting really fresh and stops that muddying effect from the overworking sometimes it's difficult to see when you finish so I always say to my students, just walk away, come back maybe a day later to see if you need to do any more. You'll be a lot more objective.
to finish off this painting, I thought I'd give a little spatter of some orange, some yellow and some red on the sort of horizon line and in and around the poppy field as well. So here's the finished painting. I've removed the washi tape to reveal a really nice white border. If you'd like to get access to my exclusive tutorials, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You'll also get access to my downloadable outline sketches. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click the word Patreon. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.